Hi, in this video I want to show you how to use the Harmonic Scanner Pro indicator, how to configure it since it has a lot of configuration options and what is the difference between the Harmonic Scanner Pro and the free Harmonic Scanner version. So here I have the chart of Apple with the standard Harmonic Scanner indicator enabled and as you can see we have the cipher pattern and nothing else. Let's start by adding the Harmonic Scanner Pro indicator, so we will immediately see the difference between those two scripts. So open indicators and type Harmonic Scanner Pro. Since this is an invite only script, make sure you have this green paddle lock here. It means that you have access to the script. To get access to this indicator, just go to trading view and leave a comment that you want to have a trial and I will give you a trial for seven days. So seven days is enough to test it out. And if you like this script and you want to use it, just visit our page where we can find the monthly and yearly subscriptions. So we click Harmonic Scanner Pro and by default a lot is happening for Apple chart. It can be very confusing so I will show you how to hide most of this information. So first let's hide the standard Harmonic Scanner and now you can see that the main difference is that Harmonic Scanner Pro detects all the harmonic patterns it can find. So first of all, let's hide all this additional information from the labels. So don't show the retracement levels. And one more thing is that if multiple lines share the same points, Harmonic Scanner Pro will try to move the chart so you can easily follow which line goes where. So let's zoom in here. Let's say we have this green line that starts at this point, goes here, 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 and ends here as either a bat or a shark pattern. I think it's actually the shark one. So you can go to the options and disable the move charts and move labels. And now you will see that all the lines are sharing the same location on the chart, so they are not moved and sometimes it's hard to follow where each line goes. So here the green line is on the top, but for example there is a purple line that hides behind the green line here and then it emerges here. So the move chart and move labels options are very useful if you want to easily follow where each line goes. But for example, in this case, it might be too much to use the default values. So we might lower the percentage to one or even 0 0.5. Okay, and then move labels is 10%. In case of stocks, 2% it's actually fine. It also depends on what interval you are using. So if I switch to 10 minutes interval, even 0.5% it will be too much because the price changes are very, very small. Let's go back to one hour interval. Another thing that you probably want to change is the depth of a zigzag pattern. Otherwise, you will see that we'll have patterns that are ending here and this is not really a high or low point on this chart. So let's go with 20. I like to use 20 as the default value. And let's enable draw zigzag option to see which points are actually being considered. By the way, when you change some options here, you can click this and choose save as default. So then the next time you add this script to your chart, it will by default use 20 as the depth and draw the zigzag for you. So that's a nice option to have. 
Okay, now it looks much better. We don't have patterns detected in the middle of the move. We have some patterns here. And we still have quite a few patterns on the chart. As I always say in my other videos, the fact that there is a pattern somewhere on the chart doesn't mean that the price will change direction. You always have to use some additional technical analysis tools. But if you see a lot of patterns happening at the same place, there is a higher than usual chance that, well, there is something going on and this is some important Fibonacci retracement level here. And if you, for example, draw the resistance line, let's use the rectangle, you can see that we actually had a resistance here, another bounce here, and again, price bounce off from here. So drawing support and resistance lines is another way of strengthening the harmonic patterns. Let's check some other instruments for harmonic patterns. So here we are using one hour interval. We can change it to a daily one. Let me change the size of the zigzag line because it's too big. I like to use mostly the one hour interval. Let's check the Forex. Forex usually has a lot of harmonic patterns. And as you can see here again, we moved the charts by quite a lot, even though it's currently set to 0.5%. I, I think you can lower it to 0.1. Yeah. Since the prices in Forex are very low, it's like 1.21. Moving by 0.5%, it's already too much. So one thing that might be confusing is that when you move the charts, it looks like those lines are not touching this bar. But basically, how you should interpret this chart is that all those points are exactly on this candle. They are just moved up so we can see how the lines goes. Let's also check some cryptocurrencies. So just like the Harmonic Scanner, Harmonic Scanner Pro also has some options, but this one has a really huge amount of options. Let's go through them one by one. First, let me find a chart that has a lot of harmonic patterns. Apple is a good example. First of all, the depth of the zigzag pattern. If you decrease it, you'll see that more points are being checked. And you might notice that some patterns disappeared. That's because we are specifying how many points to check. So if the depth of a zigzag pattern is low, those 50 points to check will be on the right side of the chart. So 20 is usually the default value that I use. Next, we have the error tolerance. This option defines how far from the ideal harmonic pattern the one that we found on the chart can be. For example, if we say that we accept 5% error tolerance, then if the ideal retracement level is, let's say, 1.0, 
we would be happy with anything between 0.95 and 1.05. 5% is a good value. If you want to be more strict, you can go down to 3. Anything above 5 is usually useless because it will find a lot of formations that are not even harmonic patterns. If we go with 3, you can see that most of those formations disappeared. Well, actually all of them. Next, we can define how many points we want to check. By default, we are checking 50, but you can really put whatever value you want to put here. Although, if you put too many numbers to check, the script will probably time out, yeah. You will get this study error saying that loop takes too long to execute. So I usually stick with 50 because with the depth of a zigzag pattern set to 20, it will actually check a lot of points in the past. You can choose, for example, 10, and it will only check the points in the recent history. Let's go back and change it to 50. And now we have some options where we can disable some harmonic patterns. For example, if you only want to search for the up patterns because you're not short selling, you can disable this. And all those patterns that were sell patterns will disappear. Or if you like to short sell some stocks, you can enable only the down patterns. Here you can also change the default colors of the label and of the text. This is useful when you don't like the default colors or maybe you don't see them very well because you're colorblind. You can also be more specific in which patterns you want to detect. By default, we are detecting all the patterns, but for example, if you're not a fan of shark and cipher patterns, you can disable them. Or if you only want to use the Gartley pattern, you can disable all the patterns but the Gartley. So with those two options, you can really limit which patterns you want to find on your chart. And this will also affect which patterns you are getting with the alerts. I will talk about alerts in a moment. So next option is draw zigzag. If you enable it, you can see which points are being checked by the script. Then we can enable show retracement levels and each label will contain the information about each retracement. So what's the value for XAB, ABC, BCD and XAD. You can get the same values by simply drawing the harmonic pattern. So here we have the crap down with the values roughly corresponding to what I draw here. I usually disable this option because, well, it takes a lot of place on the chart. But the nice thing is that even when you disable it, you can hover over this label and you will see the retracement values. Next we have show no formation label and it will put a label with no formation on every point that was checked and where no harmonic pattern was found. I almost never use this option because, well, it doesn't give you any useful information. Next, you can change the width of the zigzag line and the formation line. Those two options we already saw before, so you can move the charts if they are too close to each other and you want to easily see how the line goes.
and you can also move the labels if they are on top of each other. And last but not least, we have a bunch of checkboxes for every retracement level of every harmonic pattern. Let's take a look at Gartley. So what we have here defines which retracement levels we want to enable. By default, I have enabled all of them, but maybe if you don't use the same retracement levels as described by Scott Carney, you might want to disable some of them. So let's take a look at Gartley. Let me disable all the other patterns. And let's show the retracement levels. So here we have Gartley that checks that XAB is at around 0 0.61. And for XAB, that's actually the only retracement level that will be checked. So if we disable it, you will completely disable the Gartley pattern because well, there is no other retracement that we can check for XAB. Then for ABC, we have 0 0.811, which is within the 5% error of 0 0.78. So as you can see, we can disable this one, this one, this one, and this one, and this will still be found. But if we say that we want to find a Gartley pattern, but not the one that has 0 0.786 retracement value, it will disappear. And the same for BCD, here is 1.23, so it's this retracement value. And then for XAD, again, there is only one value that we check, so it has to stay like that, otherwise we won't find any Gartley patterns. And we have the corresponding values for all the other patterns. One difference is the shark retracement levels. So if you hover over this tooltip, you will see that the shark formation points that I'm using here are named X, A, B, C, D, just like the other formations. Because you might see that some literature is using points 0, X, A, B, C. And for me, that's kind of useless confusion. So I will stick to X, A, B, C, D. And as you know, Cypher is using slightly different legs for the retracement level. So you can see here we have XCD instead of XAD as for every other formation. So depending on what methodology of harmonic patterns you are using, you might want to disable some of those checkboxes. And then you can just save as default, so you will always use those settings in the future. Let me restore the default values because I don't like the color of this label. Okay. Another useful feature are alerts, so let me show you how we can add them. So let's zoom back to the most recent data. And if you want to add an alert, there are two ways how you can do this. You can go to the alerts menu and click this guy, or you can right click on the chart and select add alert. And here under the condition, select harmonic scanner dot dot dot, which is harmonic scanner pro, but just the full name didn't fit. And you can also change the alert name, although you will always see the name of the current instrument in the alert, so I usually leave it default. If you never use alerts on TradingView, what they do is that when a new harmonic formation appears, you will get a notification, either here in this desktop application or on your mobile application. This is a great feature because the moment that the new harmonic pattern appears on the hourly chart, you will be notified, so you don't have to check Apple chart every hour to see, hmm, is there a new harmonic pattern or not? So when the new harmonic pattern appears, you will get a pop-up notification. Let me try to simulate it by switching to a more frequent interval and setting the error tolerance to very high, so a lot of harmonic patterns, well, a lot of patterns that are not really harmonic patterns will be detected. 
Since Apple is still in the pre-market, let's go to cryptocurrencies because they are traded 24 seven. And let's switch to, let's say 15 seconds interval. Huh. We actually have a deep crap here. Interesting. So let's switch the error, error tolerance to something very high, like 20. As you can see, it looks awful because we enabled moving the lines and labels and the price changes are very, very small here. So let me actually disable it. Okay. Now let's go here and click this and add a new alert. We can change the name. You can check this option to get a notification also on the app if you have the TradingView app installed. And you can also get an email or even use a webhook URL. So a TradingView will send a GET or POST request to some URL that you are using. This is some pretty advanced stuff. So if you don't know what a webhook URL is, don't worry. So we click create. It will take a few seconds to appear here. And now we should be bombarded with alerts. Well, once there is a new point in the zigzag. Let's wait a couple of minutes. I will fast forward this part of the video. And after some time, we had an alert. We would get this pop-up even if we were checking a different stock. So of course, I don't recommend setting alerts on such a small interval. For me, usually one hour works the best. So as you can see, alerts are one of the best features of TradingView because you can set alerts on some stocks or cryptocurrencies that you want to monitor. And whenever there is a new harmonic pattern, you will get an automatic notification. So let's remove those two alerts. Also, if you put an alert on a very small interval that gives you a lot of alerts in the same time, at some point trading view will pause this alert. So keep that in mind. In case you're wondering what are the differences between the Harmonic Scanner and Harmonic Scanner Pro, and if it's worth to pay for the Pro version, the main differences are, first of all, the alerts. So the standard Harmonic Scanner doesn't have alerts and there is no way for you to get a notification about new patterns unless you actually go to TradingView and look at the charts yourself. The Pro version can check an unlimited number of points in the past and it will display all the Harmonic patterns it finds. The standard version will only check the last six high and low points and it will only display the first pattern it finds. In many cases, that's fine, but sometimes there are a few harmonic patterns happening at the same time, so it's good to see all of them. And you can also enable and disable specific patterns. For example, if you only want to look for the bullish or for the bearish patterns. And on top of that, you can enable and disable some specific harmonic retracement values. By default, I have enabled all the retracement levels as described in books by Scott Carney, but different sources might recommend using different values. So if you have your own preferences, you can uncheck some of the retracement values. So as you can see, the pro version offers some really advanced configuration options. Plus, it finds more patterns on the charts. If you are still not convinced, leave a comment on TradingView or send me a message and I will give you a free 7 days trial so you can test it out yourself.
Check out some other videos to see how to use Harmonic Scanner Pro as part of your technical analysis toolset, how to solve some common errors, or what other indicators we have. Also, check out our website where we share detailed instructions on how to configure and use each indicator.